it's Wendell, and I'm back again with the System 76 Threadripper Monster 32 cores of insanity. Yes. That's Eric Raymond's computer. I just borrowed it for a little while. Uh, what are you going to do? I think we're long overdue for a VFIO video. The good news is that the guides that I did, I mean, this it's hard to believe that this whole thing really kicked off in like 2015. I mean, you could find some posts from me on the internet even before that, but it's hard for me to imagine that this whole thing really kicked off in 2015 when I ran GTA 5 on Linux. But now you can run GTA 5 on Linux natively. I mean, with Lutris and DXVK and Proton and the stuff that Steam is doing, man, the world really has changed these last four years. And it is a lot of headache to jump through and run a Windows virtual machine and then run all of your stuff that won't run on Linux on the Windows virtual machine. Or conversely, the amount of stuff that you need Windows for now, today, is less and less and less and less. So there is an argument to be made that running a Windows virtual machine, a full fat Windows virtual machine, is not necessarily the way that you want to go in 2019 because honestly things are working pretty well with Steam and Lutris and DXVK. On the other hand, Windows is a fundamentally flawed platform and maybe our best and brightest should not be spending time trying to recreate a flawed environment and instead they should be working on making it Linux as good as it can be. I mean, from a software engineering standpoint, from the computer scientist standpoint, if you look at the engineering that goes into the Linux kernel, the kernel itself, and some but not all open source programs, probably I would say this is true of like GCC, but this would be less true of other projects like GNOME and KDE and Xorg, but the engineering in the Linux kernel is beautiful. I mean, it is a work of art. It is hard to ascribe um, just how amazingly, like, you know, seventh wonder of the world, the pyramids at Giza, they're going to be talking about it for thousands of years, probably, because it is a feat of engineering. It's getting a little off topic here. It's time for an updated VFIO guide. The good news is that the guides that I did on the level one forum, they're basically not out of date. Even, you know, I think there's a guide for Ubuntu 14.04, basically still works even all the way up through 19.04. Uh, there's a guide for Fedora, basically works out of the box. And now Pop! OS, which is basically Ubuntu, uh, but it's a little updated and there's a little bit of a twist to it. So this system has two RTX 2080s. And a common question on our forum was, well, I've got two identical graphics cards and doing VFIO pass-through with two identical graphics cards can be a little tricky. Well, we've helped some users on the forum, but long story short, you can handle that in the initial RAM FS. So this video is to let you know that there's a new guide for VFIO on the level one forum that will take you step-by-step -step through doing this on Pop! OS, but it's gonna work on Ubuntu, 19.04, or anything else that you might happen to run. And uh, doing VFIO with two GTX 2080s, one for the host machine and one for the virtual machine, it's basically no compromises. I mean, the gaming performance of those cards is really incredible. You don't really have any PCIe reset bugs, which the Vega reset bug still hasn't really been fully addressed. You can use Vega for pass-through, but it's a little trickier. Radeon 7 was a very strong start out the gate, good Linux kernel support. There was a regression that's mostly fixed at this point little bit bleeding edge there's some extra steps that you have to do if you're on Radeon 7 so if you want that open source AMD GPU driver which is definitely something you should want because if you don't then if you're gonna use an Nvidia card you're gonna get a code 43 problem which is we detected we're running in a virtual machine we don't like that basically what happens is at startup before the Nvidia driver loads we hop in there and insert VFIO for the video card by where it is in the system so instead of using hey, if you see an RTX 2080, bind it to VFIO, which is our driver that we use to pass it through to a virtual machine. No, 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 we don't do it that way. We say, whatever's in slot seven, and slot seven is not really super clear that that's what it is. It's actually, on this system, it's, uh, it shows up as 0000 colon 41, and 0000 colon 42. And 42 is actually the first one in the system. 41 is the, the secondary card. So I had to create my initial RAM disk with those PCIe IDs. And because they're RTX cards, there's actually four devices. The actual video device, the USB device, 
a serial device because it's got USB-C, a serial device for like reprogramming and stuff. Uh, the audio device, because normally you have the video and the audio device. And um, so it's a USB serial, audio and video. So you have four devices and you gotta pass those th through together because they're in one IO MMU group. Also in the BIOS, you gotta enable SVM and IO MMU. IO MMU is gonna be un enabled, not auto because uh, there's a funny story, there's a bug in Windows. If IOMMU is fully enabled, certain versions of the Windows installer will hang. So um, Gigabyte and MSI in particular will have IOMMU on auto, which is a partial enablement of IOMMU, so that you get IOMMU, but it's not fully enabled to the extent that will crash the Windows installer that's buggy. If you need to run business applications and you don't want to fool with wine, if you need to run, you know, like, Microsoft Access, you poor soul. I'm so sorry. That doesn't work so great. I mean, it can work in Wine, but not great. If you want it to, it's like Microsoft Access is crashing. Is that just Access? Because it could be Access. It's likely Access. But it could also be Wine. It's like, how do you know? Just run a VM. It'll basically be fine. Also, uh, making a cameo in this video is a level one USB-C KVM. It's the least expensive KVM that we've ever done. But with the RTX cards, it works pretty well. The 2070, the 2080, any of the ones with the USB-C because this is a USB-C KVM. You get DisplayPort and USB through the same connector, you get this two port KVM, so you can switch between your two graphics cards on a big giant monitor. Now you totally can get a $5 USB only KVM to switch your peripherals and use something like Looking Glass, which is really awesome. But if you do use Looking Glass, you're gonna need a probably going to need a dongle that you plug into the secondary graphics card so Windows thinks something is attached to it because the new hotness is, oh, you don't have a monitor plugged in? I'm, I'm going to pretend that stuff's not working correctly. And that's not, for some reason, some cards, depending on what the BIOS is on the card, they don't care. Quadro cards don't care. You can, it's fine. GeForce cards, not so much. So, exciting times. There's also performance tuning that you can do. And one of the easiest things that you can do to get better performance out of your virtual machine is to turn on huge pages. Huge pages, well, I mean, on Fedora, they're on by default, asterisk, but talking about Pop! OS based at Ubuntu, you need to do some stuff to enable it. Once you enable huge pages, the amount of overhead from shuffling around that large, I mean the virtual machine, you know, that's going to take up 4, 8, 16 gigabytes of your memory and shuffling that around in small chunks is a lot of work for your computer so there's a lot of extra overhead. If you use huge pages, it's able to do that shuffling in much larger chunks and you get more hardware assist when you do that, which means that it's less overhead and it's faster. If you do the huge pages thing, like in our Threadripper 2990WX, uh, like if you do the Indigo benchmark, that Indigo benchmark is, well, and also lying about unified memory access. Well, I'm getting off track, but long story short, if you just do some basic optimization and you're running a CPU like the Threadripper 2990WX, Windows will be faster in a virtual machine that has been tuned than it will be on bare metal. And that's because Windows doesn't handle the four node NUMA configuration of the uh, 2990 WX as well as Windows. 28 cores, 56 threads, passed through to a Windows virtual machine. Run the Indigo benchmark, you're able to score about 2.9. Don't have to use Core Pryo, don't have to use any hacks, it just works. Now the performance of other applications that actually were working fine in the NUMA environment uh, will suffer. And in this configuration, in this virtual machine configuration, we're basically setting it up as UNA, UMA, Unified Memory Access. We're lying to the Windows Virtual Machine about the hardware topology of our machine. Although you can experiment with it, you can also create a two node, two NUMA node system where one node has access to memory and the other one doesn't, and it performs really well. So it's definitely worth it to do some optimization. Another thing that you're likely to run into, well not likely to run into, but another common thing in level one forms is like pops and cracks in the audio. I use an HDMI pass-through, so like with the graphics card, I'm using the audio device on the graphics card in my particular setup, but not everybody is fortunate enough to have audio out on their monitor. Um, so in that case, like a USB audio device 
you could do that. You can get it to work in software, just a pure software solution, but usually a hardware solution is better. It's kind of like the storage. You know, if you can pass through a SATA device or an NVMe device, just the whole device, it's gonna be better from a performance standpoint. You don't have to, it'll work just fine without it. If you fiddle with the audio settings from some of the guides on the level one forum, some of the knowledgeable users there will help you through that. There's a little bit about that in the, in the guide that we posted. You can do it, but for me personally, I've had basically a flawless experience with the hardware audio on the graphics card. But again, depending on what your setup is and the particulars, your mileage may vary. And with the System76 system, with the USB-C and you know HDMI audio, DisplayPort audio, it's pretty butter smooth. You know that Windows scheduler regression thing? Well, now we've come full circle. So we were running Linux under Windows and getting the Indigo performance regression. Now we're running Windows with 32 cores under Linux, under KVM. We run Indigo, and as far as Task Manager knows, and as far as Windows knows, it's a UMA system, it's unified memory access. But being a Threadripper 2990WX, it cannot be Yuma. That's pretty much the last data point that we need to show that Windows just can't handle complex NUMA topologies. Of course, about the time that Microsoft gets this fixed, Intel will need it. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'll see you next time.